We are doing a case study on how we took this brand new store from zero to six figures in one month and taking inside our business ads manager. Hey guys, my name is Sagar. I have my student David with me and we'll be breaking down all the strategy on how we took this brand new store with brand new pixel from zero to six figures in one month. And we'll be sharing every single detail, but most importantly, we'll focus on Facebook ads. So if you end up sticking to the end, you'll have all our Facebook secrets so you can take your own store from zero to six figures. I'm saying even seven figures so you can finally quit your job and fire your boss so you can start enjoying your beautiful, splendid life so you can spend time with your loved ones. So let's just not waste any more time. I'm super stoked to share this video with you. So I wanna show you the numbers right here. I wanna prove the results so you guys know it's a real deal. So as you can see from November 1st to December 18th, he made about 123K out of course refresh for all the inspect element patrol out there who think it's always fake. And by the way, there's today's total, total sessions are 16 because it's one in the morning while we are filming the video. So right here for November 1st, and in the video, we'll explain all these drops, why everything is happening. So don't panic. As you can see, he made 123K and his ad spend was 53,000. So he had a pretty solid ROAS of about 2.2. Of course, Facebook doesn't track all that. 53, and he did make six figures in his first month because he launched the product on 5th. And by the time it was December 6th, 31 days, and boom, you can see he did six figures right here in the first month. So. Let's, that's enough for the number. Let's just show you guys what you guys came here for. So taking a new store from zero to six figures in 31 days by one and only Sagar Miller and David, all right? So I wanna share some stats. The average product cost is $18 to buy from AliExpress and then he's selling for $50. So his profit margin is $32. That's his break-even cost per purchase. His break-even ROAS is 1.56 and we shared with you guys that it cost, it, he had a ROAS of 2.2, so which is, he's pretty much profitable. And you wanna let them know how much profit you made? Yeah, so between the date of like November 5th till December 6th, the profit was around 19 to 20K. Okay, 19 to 20K, all right. So he'll talk about a little bit about the website. So the website was pretty much a one product store with a few upsells. It was mostly uh, one product about that specific niche and the music niche, because that's something that I was personally into. And the product helped solve a problem for musicians. As well, the theme that I was using was definitely free and the upsells, which is pretty much to increase the order value of the product. And like I said, a lot of people have this thing where they want to buy paid themes. And like I said, the free themes work great. I personally use W theme. I even use Brooklyn theme and he's using narrative. So like I said, theme does not matter that much. It's about how he made his product look. He's made his thing look really, really nice. Yeah, so it was just focusing on making sure the product page had images, just and everything, just so it convert them. And it's really not about what your theme looks like or how much money you pay for the theme. It's just making sure that everything looks clean and safe for the customer. All right, and then, yeah, we'll talk about the product description, you know, how his product page looks. So he took inspiration from his competitors, and that's what I always recommend everyone. And like he already said, he had a gift and pictures in his thing. There was gifts, picture everywhere. He had bold text, bold big text where people can read it. And then he would say whatever that is and then there would be small text. And he, this is the great thing he did, go ahead. Yeah, so even like he was mentioning the bold text because some people might just skim through it. And as long as the bold text says something that um, pretty much tells you about the product and what the benefits and features are, that's enough and the people that are interested in reading the entire thing, then yeah, they'll go ahead and read the copy and kind of get sold by it. And then I made sure to go to Amazon and check the frequently asked questions on the product that I was selling to kind of handle objections right off the bat. So if they do have any questions about, okay, will this work with this type of instrument or whatever, they'll be answered right there and that will allow them to be converted to customers better. And another thing he did was after he launched the store, he in the comment section, you know, people always were asking the same question. He added those questions in his description. I never thought of that, but I thought that was smart of him. That comment section question, he just put it right there and the handle objection right there. And another next thing he added guarantee, 30 day money back guarantee. And the most bottom of the page, he had reviews, handwritten reviews. He wrote like solid, he, you can of course change up the reviews. He just made it look solid, like go super in detail. Yeah, so what I did for the handwriting, I just went to Amazon and then other and my competitors also reviews and kind of just took inspiration of what they were reviewing because you are selling the same product, you're not really faking it. You're just making sure that you don't have this generic, like typical, awesome product that ships fast. Like you don't want that because that's not going to help your customers trust you, right? You want detailed reviews where you can actually explain the benefits or like what they felt when they first wanted to buy the product and so on. 
and you could even handle objections in the in the reviews because you can be smart about it and be like, okay, some people might have trouble with this, so I'm gonna answer that in the comments saying, oh, it shipped so fast and was great and it helped this problem and all that. So just focus on making sure your reviews are. And yeah, of course, okay. make sure always have pictures, always add pictures to the reviews. Product description, you don't want to complicate it. I do have a video on product description, you want to watch that. And that's kind of the uh, strategy he followed, you know. So the next phase, next phase is testing phase, you know. Like I said, I just want to cut through all that little stuff. We don't focus, he's like that, he, we don't focus much on the product. We just make sure our website looks good and then we just focus on Facebook ads. So for testing phase, I always teach everyone one campaign, 10 interest ad sets and three ad creators. But what he did was he started with one campaign and he had 20 different interest ad sets because he, he was like, oh, I had too much confidence in the product. So yeah, that's perfect. And he only had two ad creatives and he used that. Of course, worldwide targeting and he targeted Facebook and Instagram feeds. But this is what I'm experimenting right now. I even target, even in the testing phase, I target Facebook feed, Instagram feed, and I target Instagram Explorer, and I target Facebook video feed. So there's four things I select now. So you wanna go with those. And then testing phase continued, you know. Another thing I think is a great reason for his success that that's what he, I think they learned that being patient after you launch the ads, you wanna be patient, you wanna wait. In the minute, we'll, I'll break down a lot of stuff and that will make more sense. But being patient just helps so much because what he would do in the beginning, he was like, oh, I'm not making money, I'm losing money, I'm gonna turn off the ads. That's not a no-go. You wanna, in the testing phase, be patient made thoughtful decision and another thing for his success is he smashed the like button so you should smash the like button right 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 now all right and while the testing phase arrived you know he started adding apps and all that stuff so all the apps are listed here i'll go through them real quick clavio he used that to do abandonment abandonment card sequence set up the abandonment card sequence me personally i would recommend you uh, do uh, it's called abandon protector that's what the app i use but you can even use clavio to make some money back from all the people who abandon cards another one is currency converter he used i don't use that but you can definitely use the app it's just switch up the currency if you are targeting worldwide people eu cookie bar um it's kind of a legal app you have to use it if you run traffic in europe Otherwise, you can get, uh, get into issues of heavy fines. So just download that cookie bar and that's great, you know. It's just some legal stuff. In-card upsell is the upsell app on your card page. It just makes another box on top. Be like, hey, you bought the product X. You might as well, you should add product Y to your, uh, to your card. And people just click that and it's right there. It doesn't interrupt with the experience. Insta feed is just a way of making your product page look more legit. You just add it at the bottom and your product page looks like 10 times better. Looks is to review. It's a review app and all that stuff. You just bring the reviews in and you can edit them. Okay. And then when the other apps that you see on the right side, those are the ones that really bought me a return on my investment on using them. Let's say quantity breaks allow the customers to buy more than one by a discount. So I had, let's say they buy two, they get 10% off, three, 15%, you kind of get the point. It goes all the way up to like, five to four, it really depends on your preference. And that added me about, I don't know if in the screenshot it showed, around 15 to 20 extra thousand dollars, just like right there for using that app. So, and that was really helpful. Also SMS bump, that spent only $40 and it brought me around $2,500 in return, which is a crazy like ROI of that. And it's just setting up an automation sequence of like text messages, just like what you're doing with Clayview, just getting them back from forgetting when they add it to cart, it does the same thing, but it texts them and it just makes them feel like it's a real brand and they go back and really like feel confident in purchasing with you. Sticky card just allows them to scroll down and always have the, the cart as a cart button there. And there's multiple ways you could set that up to like where to shake and what's around just to keep their attention on the add to cart, make them do that impulse decision. And then after they bought my product, they were able to get this offer with Sweet Upsell which after they pay for the product, they say like, hey, like, thanks for being a customer. We want to give you this other case or whatever product that you have as an upsell for 50%, 40% off, uh, just a limited time offer for the next four to 30 minutes. And then they kind of feel like scarcity to do that and they add it. And I had a lot of people that added that product and it helped a lot. All right, so and the next thing is testing phase. You know, we already talked about the testing. We launched the products and you will be patient. So you launched ads on November 5th until November 5, we kind of did kind of nothing, you know, we just let it wait. 
We launched 20 ad set at $5 a day. Total amount spent was $100 each day. We let those three ads run for three days before tweaking anything. And on the third day, on that, on the ninth, on the fourth day, I had it wrong here. We just kind of would duplicate the one that was making you money. But remember this right here. It was on the first four days, the ad sets were like kind of unprofitable. He was kind of losing money. Only money he made was like $30 on the third day, which is damn near nothing, you know? So that was the thing where we didn't touch anything. But on November 9th, this is, or I want to share the PL statement, like how much profit he was making. So you can see on the first day, he lost $35. Second day he lost forty dollars. On the third day he made like twenty two dollars. But next day he again lost one dollar. But what we did on the fourth day right here on November eighth, I'm gonna share on the next page on November nine night, we turned off the unprofitable ad sets and we duplicated the winning ad set ten times into new campaign. And one more thing I want to mention: the date might dates might be off because no one really remember what exactly date i did and what exact step you know so it's kind of hard to track it might be one and two days off but this was the steps we took after testing phase was over on this night when it was one dollar loss i was like oh this product is getting some sales now what you want to do is turn off the unprofitable ad sets and duplicate winning ad set 10 times into new campaign and we did that and then next time on November, November 9th, 11th night, we launched more cold interest ads. So I'm gonna show the PL statement as you guys can see. When we launched the duplicates right here, it was profitable, profitable, profitable. But for some reason, right here on November 11th, it just became unprofitable. And like I just told him, I was like, just wait, it might just fix up the issue. If some days you usually have bad days, because you guys can see he was making good amount of money right here. And again, even if it was unprofitable, I didn't really care because you gotta understand, he was still look at the revenue. He was making about four hundred dollars and he was doing ten of eight or ten sales every day. I was like, that's perfect. So we were just kind of waiting to get more and more sales. So on the next day, on November 12, we smashed the like button. So you should smash the like button right, right, right now. All, right, all jokes aside, right? So we waited and on November 12 to 14, it was unprofitable as you can see on the PL server. It was profitable, but it was getting sales. So what was I on the end on November 49th, 14th night, I can see that we were hitting around 50 orders. So I was like, the product is doing good. It's still losing money but it has some profitable days and it's not losing that much money. He's making $400 in revenue and he's only losing $35, which is a good sign. He's only losing 10% of the money. That means this product might have the potential to scale. So what we did on November 14th night, we duplicated all the ads and every single asset that have two or more sales five times into a new campaign. And then on, you'll see on the 14th night on the PL statement, the next day it became profitable right here. As you guys can see, on 15th, it became profitable right here. So it started making money. So we kind of fixed up the issue and it was continuously profitable. So let's let's go back. And this is what we did on November 17. So November 14 come around, we fixed on the 14th night. And on the 14th night, it was profitable. 15, 16, and 17, it was profitable. I was like, this is the perfect time to launch CBO. And kind of at the same time, I'm not doing any of this. I'm having I'm telling him what supposed to do and then I let him use his common sense and have him create a lookalike audience and I kind of let him know that you now should start creating lookalike audience. Now you should try creating CBO campaigns, you know. So on the 17th night we launched CBO campaigns and we launched lookalike audience for video views 95%. So I'll show you, take you the ads manager right here. As you can see, I think around that time, I think we already gathered about 80 to 100 orders. So that's when we both kind of talked about like, okay, I think it's enough purchases to start launching those video like a like audiences, 10% um, time spending, all the ones like he mentioned in a lot of the videos. All right, so you guys can see on 17th, we were only spending $263 right here, right? But on 79th, we of course launched the ad set and we have them, uh, so we scheduled them for next morning. And you'll see on November 18th, our ad spend kind of tripled. We were spending $200, now we are spending $600. And the only difference that kind of changed is there's a CBO campaign right here, VV95, and then we launched that campaign at $300 budget. So that's the only thing changed, nothing crazy. Like we did, not, did nothing special to just blow out this results. We just launched the CBO campaigns for look like VV95. So at that point he was making about $1,500 or something like that, but it was super profitable. 
And then on November 21st, I kind of started getting the point of like, okay, whatever is working, they started duplicating it and I started launching more CBO campaigns. Uh, one of the top performing ones that we launched around this time was uh, Top Time Spent by 10%. So that one was super profitable right off the bat. And then I started getting all the assets that were making me sales and getting more than three to five sales in the past two to three days. And I kind of just dumped them in the CBO for a hundred dollars. I did that for a lot of them. And then as well as I launched a add to cart CBO at $300 a day as well. So that kind of increased the daily budget a lot, but yeah, as you can see that also increased the revenue that we were getting and it was still profitable throughout the entire time. And at this point, he has already got the hang of what's going on. The whole point was now just kind of rinsing and repeating, launching more lookalike audience, launching more CBO and using your common sense to turn off the one that doesn't make you money and use the one that makes you money. And again, with in scaling campaign, it, when you're scaling, the whole point is you kind of want to test every single lookalike audience out. And that's what he kind of did further ahead. And you know, as you guys can see, November 28th, he, and this is the best thing he did. He wouldn't tweak with them. He would kind of manage them a little bit and let it run for a few days. And on November 28th, that was his biggest day, November 28th. But of course the changes are made before that day on November 27th night, you know, like he already said, he duplicated a lot of working ads and put them in a new campaign and all the CBO campaigns he had Like I think at three CBO campaigns at this point that were working at this point, he put he increased the budget by 1.5. So they, if they're going for $300, he changed the budget to 450. Launch more CBO campaigns that are possible. He would launch like what other CBO look like campaigns. So launch. I actually started just having fun with it and just testing as many as I could for the ones that were profitable. I made sure to just up the budget by like 1.5, and then I just started launching a, a purchase video views for 50%, 25%, and just testing as much as you could because I already knew that I had the data for it. And I knew that because of the profitable CBOs that I had, I wasn't going to lose money even if I was testing new ones. And it's the same principle that we do in the testing phase. Just let them run for two to three days and you're going to see, okay, like this campaign is profitable and we kind of focus and he taught me more to focus on the ROAS of the campaign. Not really go inside and like tweak everything and just make sure it's a campaign profitable overall. If it is, and just let it run and up the budget. So kind of got the hang of it, rinse and repeat of that process. Yeah, and again, if it's unprofitable, of course you turn it down, turn it off, or what you can do is if it's an unprofitable campaign, you can go inside and try to turn off the bad ad sets and stuff like that. So that's kind of the theory here. And like also sometimes the advice that he gave me was, uh, when you up the budget, sometimes it might not be profitable when tweaking the budget. And I noticed that one time I went to 400 or $500 a day for one of the CBOs and it wasn't performing as well. And I went back to 300 and it started being optimizing to that specific budget and it just killed it throughout that. So sometimes it's just duplicating the CBO campaign one more time and then tweaking the budget and leaving the one at 300 or that specific budget that's being profitable and letting that run and just leaving it alone. Yeah. And like I said, it will be different for some ad account that worked for great for him duplicating CBO, but I have one ad account. Whenever I duplicate CBOs in that, and if they are the same kind of CBO look like audience, they always perform bad. For some reason, the performance just drops. So it's kind of always different. So you kind of have to test it for yourself, you know? All right. And again, on November 31st till December 1st, he had to lower the budget of CBO because of cash flow issues. So you guys can see right here, he's doing about $8,000 days and suddenly he scaled down. The reason for that is, you know, the cash flow issue. You want to go over uh, that and whether, what you mean by cash flow issues? Yeah, so I got excited with the whole like hitting the AK day and that was like my biggest revenue ever. But then I, that's something that's super important for you guys to remember that I learned the hard way was I focus on that revenue, but I realized, okay, I'm spending almost $3,000 to reach that. And I couldn't keep up with spending that on the daily, right? And because I did that for two days straight, that was about $6,000. And when you're working with Shopify payments, it take two to three business days to deposit your money that you're making. So the next days I just ran out of capital. I didn't have enough cash flow liquid for me to be able to invest that in capital every single day and keep up with that. So I had to slow down to be able to wait for those days to the money to be deposited to then scale back up. Uh, and then again, on December 3rd, I think he got paid by Shopify, the money came into his bank account, and then he so he scaled back up and raised the budget of the CBOs again, you know, and everything started going good. As you can see right here, on December 3 to uh, 3 to 6, he kind of killed it. He was doing $7,000 a day consistent. It was pretty much pretty profitable. As you guys can go back to the PL statement, do the math yourself. 
And right here, I know everyone want to know about this drop. Tell them what happened on December 7, why you scaled down. Yeah, so <clears throat> multiple things happened around there. I got my Facebook ad account disabled, in which I think happens to everyone. And Cigar talks about how like that's just inedible, right? The obstacles would just come by and you just have to kind of deal with them and provide as much paperwork as we can for them to just work and prove that they're just doing it to know that you're a legitimate business, right? And so they shut down my ad account, so it was like all organic sales from there. And also then PayPal decided to give me a hold on my money and they held about like $9,000 for a while. And they were all just pretty much asking for like the transaction level, why some of them were more than the price point, and then just like tracking information, just stuff that you have to deal with. But you just have to like be patient about it. Yeah, so this is his plan is right now he'll get the money back from Shopify and he'll try to scale this product back up and he'll do a shop uh, and after he gets Shopify reserve. Yeah, and then I still forgot to mention the Shopify reserve, they, after, like during the first week or something, they told me, okay, like we're going to hold 15% of like the revenue that you bring. And I didn't really pay attention to that. I really take a look at the money they were holding until later I was like, where's like my profit, right? And then I see on the payouts, when you go to payment providers, view payouts, you'll see how much they hold it under the reserves if that happens to you. And they are holding about $10,000. All right. And you know, that's it for the today's video and subscribe if you got value so you can buy some Gucci shoes. And one more very important thing, if you want to follow along his journey of dropshipping, he has, he will start a YouTube channel. I don't know when he's going to start it, but I'll leave the link below. So you guys can go out there, subscribe to him, you know, follow his journey. And that's so far I have to say, you want to tell them anything else? No, just like continue to watch as much of the videos that Cigar puts out because it's one of the most transparent videos that he gives out. And he's pretty much showing you like the step by step. And as long as just like you can follow my journey and our journey together as we continue to just make stores and property, and you could do that yourself as well. And then also I think my Instagram will be down below in the description. All right, so shout out if you got value, buy some Gucci shoes. All right, peace.